We've never had a really big and hostile country come into our markets. And most of the international competition we have faced from Japan, from Germany, from the rest of Europe has come without a sense that behind it was a government that has sought confrontations with the United States on a regular basis. The WTO, it's not based here. I mean, who in the United States is on the WTO? Does anybody know? In 2001, China joined the WTO, the World Trade Organization, with the strong support of a Democratic president and a Republican-controlled Congress. Before the ink was dry on this free trade agreement, China began flooding American markets with its illegally subsidized and very dangerous exports, while the big multinational companies that had lobbied heavily for the agreement rapidly accelerated the offshoring of American factories and American jobs to China. Today, as a result of the biggest political shell game in American economic history, China has stolen thousands of our factories and millions of our jobs. Multinational corporation profits are soaring, and we now owe over $3 trillion to the world's largest communist nation. This was not how it was supposed to turn out. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. When William Jefferson Clinton was selling China's entry into the World Trade Organization to the American people. If you believe in a future of greater openness and freedom for the people of China, you ought to be for this agreement. If you believe in a future of greater prosperity for the American people, you certainly should be for this agreement. If you believe in a future of peace and security for Asia and the world, you should be for this agreement. This is the right thing to do. It's an historic opportunity and a profound American responsibility. In pushing for China's entry into the WTO, President Clinton embraced a doctrine dating back to President Richard Nixon, known in Washington circles as the policy of engagement. Peking, historic site for an unprecedented meeting between East and West. President and Mrs. Nixon arrive, and Premier Zhou Enlai is on hand to extend an official welcome to the presidential couple. It's Mr. Nixon's initial move toward his self-proclaimed goal, a generation of peace. Here, President Clinton offers his own vision of the goal of engaging China. I, I don't believe it's right to crack down on people for their religious views or their political expression or because they want to be in an association like the Falun Gong. I don't think that's right. But I don't believe that we will have more influence on China by giving them the back of our hand. In masterfully arguing for China's entry into the World Trade Organization, President Clinton promised the brightest of futures for both American workers and American manufacturers. Economically, this agreement is the equivalent of a one-way street. It requires China to open its markets with a fifth of the world's population, potentially the biggest markets in the world. For the first time, China will agree to play by the same open trading rules we do never happened before. For the first time, our companies will be able to sell and distribute products in China made by workers here in America. And by economically engaging China, both Democrats and Republicans argued this would ultimately democratize the Chinese dragon and free the Chinese people. We have waged an intense battle in support of an important principle, and that is freedom. And the people of China and the citizens of the United States will benefit enormously. After the victory vote, the Republican House majority leaders would celebrate the bipartisan victory with the cracking open of a ceremonial fortune cookie. Not very good at these things. <laughs> it's got a lottery number, no. <laughs> so new American proverb. New prosperity awaits you because normal trade relations. Yeah! It's a confrontation of worldviews that we will win, and I'm looking forward to the future. It most certainly will result in more unemployment in the U.S. and to the advantage of China. We're chumps. 
So just how big of a chump has America been for supporting China's entry into the World Trade Organization in 2001? It's like we're in the Super Bowl of globalization, and in fact, we're being taken apart. And in this Super Bowl of globalization, when you tally up the score on human rights abuses and consider the plight of Tibet, the torture of the Falun Gong, and the crushing of religion and democracy, this much is clear. The Chinese government is the world's worst human rights abuser on the planet today. And when you tally up the score on China's rapid military buildup, this too is clear. China is the only major nation in the world that is preparing to kill Americans. And of course, when you count the jobs lost and factories gone and millions of Americans out of work. American manufacturing has been in an absolute crisis over the last decade. Five and a half million manufacturing jobs gone. 57,000 manufacturing facilities closed in this nation. So you're in a massive jobless recovery. You've got 28 million women and men who are in various stages of unemployment, twice the official number. When you tally up all these scores, it's crystal clear that China's entry into the World Trade Organization has been both a losing and a very dangerous proposition. Even as America has all but completely surrendered its manufacturing base to China. China until today is a totalitarian regime, is a dynasty. No change at all, no republic. Not people's country. We need to understand China better. We have this sort of glowy view of the trajectory of China's history. But what we have seen, especially over the last couple of years, is a China that is moving in the wrong directions on everything. And it's not just human rights. It's its relations with its neighbors, its economy, you name it. This is a country that is going backwards in all phases. I hear people referring to the PRC or the People's Republic. Well, let's be honest, as soon as we accept that phrase, we're joining China in the reality distortion field. It's a lie. It is not the people's and it is not the republic. Stop saying that. It's communist China. We've got to spread the word that there's danger out there and we need to change our policies. We can no longer afford to treat a communist dictatorship in China uh, as we would treat any other democratic institution because they have treated us like fools for doing that. And that's because we have been fools.